Okay, Dean, what's your take on electric cars? Are you a fan? Yeah, well, I'm just happy to be hanging out with you, talking about cars in general. This is an area that I think is uh, an area of interest for a lot of people because we get a lot of questions about electric cars. We have customers that have performance cars and they're thinking about getting an electric car you know, for their family or for them, you know, to go back and forth to work or whatever. But it's a, it's a, the market has really changed dramatically in the last five years. How, how so, though? What, what, what kind of things are you seeing? The biggest change that we've seen is just the saturation of the market. So early on when Tesla was the only maker out there, everybody felt like they had to have a Tesla in their driveway, right? And everybody was waiting for the next Roadster or the next Tesla car. But now, fast forward, uh, there's so much inventory that uh, the market is saturated and the prices, the resale and wholesale prices have collapsed. Not only that, that's one factor, but the other factor, honestly, is there's a lot more electric car makers in the market now. And so it doesn't appear that the market really is ready for more than a 10 or a 15% of the total car market to be electric cars. Seems to be an issue with the infrastructure of like charging stations as well, right? Especially here in California. Oh, that's a huge issue. That's a great point. A lot of it's driven by the fact that uh, there's no universal standard for charging stations. Right? There was this notion for a while that there'd be cooperation from the new companies like Rivian and Rivian customers would be able to plug into a Tesla charging station. That has not happened. Not only is there a lack of a standard interface to plug into, you go to a charging station and it's only Tesla adapters that can plug in, you're screwed. The other problem is a lot of them aren't very well maintained. So you can get to a charging station and 50% of them are down or broken. So that's why you see these long lines and you see a lot of frustration. If Elon Musk came walking in here, hypothetically, what would you say to him about electric cars? Well, listen, uh, Elon is the 800 pound gorilla. The rules don't apply to the 800 pound gorilla. Elon can withstand all this pricing pressure He's dumped the prices of his cars three, four, five, six times over the last two or three years because the market is saturated. But he can withstand that, right? He's got hundreds of billions or billions of dollars, and he doesn't have to be profitable. These other companies, the Rivians of the world, they're going to go out of business, in my opinion, very soon because the demand isn't there, and they're never going to be profitable. And now you see their stock prices down to a dollar or less. And you think it's the same thing with Lucid as well? Lucid's got even a worse, bigger problem than Rivian in the valuation of their stock and the market share that they have. It's a lot less than Rivian, certainly here in Southern California. I see a lot more Rivians than I see in Lucid. So the market's going to do what the market is going to do, which is going to get rid of the small players. The real problem with the electric car business, it's the same problem that the car business has. That's why there's only three or four big car manufacturers. The amount of investment that you need to start one and the amount of money you got to keep spending isn't measured in the, not the hundreds of millions, but in the billions of dollars over a 20-year period of time. So very few companies can withstand that. And now that this market is pretty much bottomed out and the government stimulus isn't holding it up, government stimulus that they're providing individuals to go buy one, $7,500 credit or whatever that is, and the credit they're giving to the manufacturers isn't enough to overcome the lack of demand. That right there is really a, a serious problem. And it's probably a problem for anybody that went out to try to make today's shedding. What, are, what other questions do you have? Yeah, I'll, come on. I, I know you've been thinking about buying one. Don't lie. I've always been a fan of Elon and you know electric cars, but working here and being around real engines, oh, yeah. mechanical engines yeah. with soul. I just feel like electric cars, yeah, they have their place. They have their market, but they're kind of soulless in the engine so department. They're, they're soul crushing. My son, Jay, he, he bought a hybrid, a Ford hybrid and a Fusion. I'm, I thought that was a great car for him, you know, because there you got both worlds, right? You don't get stuck if you can't find a charging station or you live in an apartment and you can't charge it overnight. You still can get good fuel mileage in your car. But soul crushing is a factor for us real car enthusiasts because we love the sound of the internal combustion engine. And we love them highly modified and we love sports cars and we love lab performance cars. It's what's really missing with the electric car, in my opinion. And I know they have like sound effects in some of the Teslas. Yeah, they're trying. Right? That can yeah, emulate that, but it's not the real thing. I think 
would, you know, other than the lack of infrastructure and the lack of supply chain and the lack of in interest or demand, there's another problem. And that is, is, it depends on where you live, whether or not an electric car makes sense. Here in Southern California, you drive 10 or 15 miles to work. You're driving from Irvine, maybe to San Clemente. Perfect, right? Plug it when I get to the office, maybe plug it when I get home and I'm on the grid. But guess what? You live out, especially out in the rural areas, uh, where are you going to go in less than an hour? You're talking a two or a three hour, four hour drive to go everywhere once you get into the rural part of a country. And these cars don't deliver as advertised. They're supposed to deliver you 300 miles to charge. That's bullshit. After you've used that car for two or three years, it probably gets about 150 miles on a charge. So that's the other thing. It's worse than gas mileage that they advertise on the sticker. It's horrible. The user experience is bad. What do you think of electric trucks? We're talking about the Cybertruck. I think it's like a really good marketing scheme. Yeah. Instead of paying money for commercials and advertisement, why don't you just make like a really ugly truck yeah. that people will talk about? <laughs> Right? Yeah. Good or bad. It's just kind of like black licorice. People really love it and people really hate it. I hate black licorice. I, I hate it too. But I like the cyber truck. The electric truck market is really a collapse and just a complete failure for Ford as they tried to do that with their F-150. Here's what happened, in my opinion. They thought that what would be better, what could be better than a, a, now a truck that you charge with no gas? The problem is everybody uses their truck for utility. And the utility aspect, the charge lasts about half as much when you load it up. Or if you're towing something, maybe one third as much. So you can only get 100 miles, maybe 75 miles if you're towing something. The other thing that they learn is you put these trucks or any electric vehicle in the cold, they perform about one half as well as far as the duration is concerned. So the user experience isn't as advertised. And Ford spent so much, say Ford probably shut down factories and spent five to $10 billion to commit to electric vehicles, especially on their trucks. And it's been a huge bust. So stock of Ford is about 15, 16 bucks as a result. You know what happens when those uh, charging stations ice up, right? No. Yeah, you don't charge your car. They don't work. They don't work. They do not work, people. It's funny how we want the electric model to work for vehicles. I think we do. We don't want it to fail. But it shows you the brilliance of the internal combustion engine using gasoline. That invention happened, you know, I don't know, 130 years ago, 140 years ago, whatever that was. And here it is today, still impossible to beat, even at 4 to $5 a gallon.